Uh, it's an honor to be here. Actually, I consider it a privilege to be here. Um, when we see so many people living in war zones, people dying, um, out of work, disease, things of that sort, um, I use that and I tell my students all the time how privileged we are to be able to do what we do. And with that, I think, comes a certain a certain requirement to give back. Um, I'm a photographer, and I started working as a photographer just out of high school. My father committed suicide a few months before I graduated from high school, and I was lost. Uh, back then, we didn't talk about it like we did now, so I had to sort of internalize it. Part of that was my own, my own doing, my own making. Um, and so I picked up the camera, and man, was I passionate about that. I saw the world through my camera. I photographed everything, um, and it became my friend. So it became, um, it, 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 for me, it became sort of a, a guide to living life and to taking this idea of privilege and turning it into, okay, I'm here. I don't have to go out and farm food. I'm fortunate. I want to take this and make it work for me. So the camera's been an excuse for me to travel to meet people, to see worlds, to do whatever I want. And it's, it's, uh, it, it continues to do that. So what I want to do is show you how it has impacted me and hopefully have you grab onto something that is really heartfelt to you and take the dream and live it because we live in a place where we can. Okay, photography, here I am at five years old. Uh, photography is a way of recording forever the things our eyes see for only a moment. Okay, this picture uh, is a marker for me, photographer, photography's markers. For me, I'm always interested in comparing different slots of time, one time to the next. Here I am a little bit older, so we have that comparison. And I really love that. I just like that kind of comparison that, you know, right now I'm here, I'm alive, I'm this. All of us are here, we're alive, we're this. Those of you that are at school here, you're going to be older. Those of us that are older, we're going to get older yet. Um, all of those things become important as transitions, as markers. Um, I think everybody needs to have an aha moment, okay? As a young photographer, I had an aha moment when I saw this picture by a man named Ansel Adams. And when I saw this picture, it literally changed my life. I said, I got to learn to do what he's doing, and I got to meet this guy. And I tell that to my students all the time. Who's your favorite? Well, write them a letter. See if they need help. I wrote him a letter. I got to know him. I got to meet him. I got to work for him because I had a dream, and I worked my butt off, and I was able to do it. Um, not, only the, not only the work that's important, in my opinion, but also the lifestyle that we lead. Okay, the ritual of doing what we do. Here's Ansel Adams after a morning of photographing in the high Sierras cooking breakfast. Those things are insignificant, but, it are a big, but are a big part of our ritual. So I became a photographer, photographing things like his, but I also became curious about the abstract quality of what pictures can do. This is water, frozen water on a pond. To me, it looks so much more. You know, it becomes sort of a womb. It becomes the Sandman. It becomes space. It becomes a lot of different things. Um, because of my love of photography, I've always wanted to spend time outside. I did a documentary of Yosemite National Park in, its, in 1990 when it celebrated its 100th anniversary. I had a fabulous opportunity to meet people from all over the world, to make a portrait of a man who about a month later unfortunately died. So this marker became a real important thing for his family. And just meeting people getting off the bus, I looked at this picture for years, and I see the modern-day Madonna and child there. Um, there's so much in photography that I can do and to mark things. This was made in 1863 by a photographer named Carlton Watkins. In 1990, I went back and I re-photographed the same location. This ritual was amazing in order to go back to the same physical place that his lens occupied 130 years later. It still sends chills up my, up my back. Um, photography can also show us what can happen in 37 minutes. 300-year-old tree, okay? Um, and also, photography can show us what happens 50 years later when the same people find, with my help, the same location that they were engaged at, okay? Um, so not only do I document this, but 
this couple, when they came, had this picture. They wanted to find the same location. They couldn't find the same location. I ran all over the place. I found it. I went back to tell them. And he and our eyes met when he was way up there. And he started tearing because he was so excited because he knew I found that location. And I'm saying, I get paid to do this. Um, I spent a year in Italy photographing the cultural aspects of Bologna, Italy, 1950 on the left, contemporary. I was looking at culture, how it changed. I don't have enough time to go into too many details, unfortunately, but a book was published out of it called Deja Vu, Bologna, Italy. And I looked at aspects of the city, like on the top in 1888, where there was a horse and buggy, and in the bottom in 1997, where there is an air pollution monitoring device. That's part of our culture now. Uh, a man with a cane is replaced by a woman with a cell phone. So I sort of looked at all different aspects, including re-photographing people years later. This is 36 years later. And it belies that old die idea of the bigger the boys, the bigger the toys. I think that's a perfect, perfect one of that. 47 years later, man in his shop. Three, I call this the three graces. Uh, three women coming home from church. Uh, there's a long story about this, but they hadn't been together for years until I tried to make this happen to bring that together. So there's so much that ha comes with that. So the impact of what the work does for me and how um, it affects other people as a result, to me, that's, that's real important. Um, I've done a lot of different things. All of my work is about time. This is uh, set my camera up out in the desert paint with light, do time exposures, uh, moonrise, sunrise, a portrait of the moonrise and the sunrise, uh, 37 electrifying minutes. Uh, I happened to see this, have my camera. It was amazing to see that performance um, and to be able to record it onto film. Um, I always wanted to get a portrait of the earth breathing and I, this is, for me, works pretty well for that. Uh, it's stop motion with individual stills animated together with morning fog coming through. So I got into this whole idea of looking at different ways of making, um, recording the power of the earth, uh, electric storm. And then also, again, as I always do, I get into social things. And I started looking at, this is the island of Ilovic, Croatia, where for centuries, people and materials once a day, come by boat. And I witnessed this experience that's been happening for hundreds of years. Boat pulls up, stuff gets put off, people get on, gets on, and the boat leaves. Hundreds of years, okay? Um, so yes, it's obvious, but for me to witness that and to document that and to look at that relativity um, against what we know, to me, is real important. Here's a quote by the Dalai Lama. When we meet real tragedy in life, we can react in two ways, either by losing hope and falling into self-destructive habits, or by using the challenge to find our inner strength. Uh, four years ago, on this Valentine's Day, I had just come back from a Fulbright in Croatia. Five days afterwards, uh, my wife was diagnosed with cancer. And so here I am on this high from this exciting thing in my life to this Holy shit, um, syndrome. So um, you can imagine all the obvious things, but when that happened, my first reaction, which I'd never experienced in my life, was to not want to photograph it. I wanted nothing to do. I just wanted this time in my life to go away. And then once we started to get a favorable result, um, I asked Michelle if she would be willing to pose, and I documented this because I knew this was a part of our life that we were gonna go through. We didn't know the outcome, but we knew we were going to go through it, and I wanted to get rid of it. But having this urge to always wanting to document it, I started to photograph it with an antiquated process called wet plate collodion, which means it's old, it mixed up chemicals, put it on glass. She was going through her own <laughs> chemical learning of, of going carboplatin, toxic, all these different things going through her body. And I was learning this chemical process, again, as a diversion. And imagine if you're going through chemotherapy and someone says, can you hold still for a minute so I can make a picture of you? Um, that's the kind of woman I'm married to. So these are the results of that. And you know, we look at this transformation. We look at this impact that our world has on us emotionally, psychologically, and how it works for us. Um, but again, this became my therapy. Artists are known to have very few therapeutic actions by creating the work. 
okay, because we, like the pianist that we just saw, there's that kind of connection where the emotion comes through and the same thing happens with anyone that works in the art form. In my opinion, it happens with any of us in our lifetimes. And so this becomes a powerful document of what was and as we move through it. Now, I had an exhibition of this work last spring at the Visual Studies Workshop here in Rochester, and we had our, our cancer treatment through Pluta Cancer Center, which is just such a wonderful place to go to, a real nourishing uh, environment. And we had an exhibit last spring where we had, we had a, it was a fundraiser, and we raised about $6,000 for the cancer center. And we had everything from poster sales to donations to head shaving. We had 16 people at the last minute decide to come up and, and have their heads shaved. So um, going from something like this, okay, uh, into something like this, and we continue to go and grow and be happy. So my encouragement to everybody is to um, have a dream. Okay, there's two things creatively I think we can all do in our life. Okay, the first thing is to figure out what we enjoy doing the most, and the second thing, figure out who's going to pay you to do it. And I feel real fortunate. I'm, and it's a it's it's a joke, but it's really funny. I have a brother that's an accountant. I have a brother that's a nuclear scientist. I have a sister that's a retired computer worker. And they think I've never worked a day in my life. And I said, thank you. I did. That's true. Um, I'll leave you with a quote that I think for me carries a lot of my ideas and thoughts about this. It's a native saying, Navajo Indians. It said, if you have a song in your heart, then life will dance for you. And I believe that to be true. Thank you. <laughs>